Hello, in this particular module and it actually is a set of modules for this particular lecture, we will see how we can design oscillators. So, until now what we have seen, we have seen amplifiers, we have seen uh, the filters and then we have to see how we can design oscillator. So, we have seen several types of filters right in the last lecture right from uh, it was low pass, high pass, band pass, band reject, amplifiers, inverting, non inverting, summing amplifier, comparator, right, differential amplifier. So, uh, we see this is how we are learning about how we can use op amp for several applications. So, when you talk about oscillations, what oscillations means right, oscillations is something vibrating, is something vibrating right that also causes the oscillation. So, how we can generate this vibrating motion or how we can generate if you talk about electronics, how we can generate this vibrating signal right with the which is constant, which is constant right. So, if something is oscillating at a constant frequency, we can generate oscillator. How we can arrive to this particular constant frequency, how we can design a circuit that will generate this constant frequency right and uh, uh, how the op amp will play a role in designing the uh, oscillators. So, that we will see in this particular module, let us see what exactly oscillators are. So, this class is about oscillators and second part would be about noise all right. So, right now the modules we will see what are the oscillators, this is class number 12. So, when you talk about oscillators, have you ever thought about our body right. So, uh, we have a brain right, <laughs> all of us have a brain I hope <laughs> and we use it, we use it. So, this is nothing but a master clock, it is our master clock right, it tells us when to sleep, when to be awake, when we are hungry this and that everything is controlled by this brain right, it is a master clock. And then we have several parts in our body which forms a signal which looks like a oscillation signal. For example, if you take a thyroid gland or you take a skeletal, skeletal muscles myotubes or you can take endocrine pancreas or you can take skin fibroblast everything you will see a certain patterns see certain patterns right you see. So, uh, there are the oscillations are everywhere all right, the oscillations are everywhere. If you say about energy, energy is a positive energy, negative energy it is nothing but the oscillations around us, it is oscillations around us. So, let us see kinds of oscillator and how we can design this oscillator. So, first before we understand how we can design the oscillator, the most important point is that when we have to design an oscillator, we have to use positive feedback, we have to use positive feedback. In case of amplifiers, we were using negative feedback. So, oscillator is a circuit that works on the principle of positive feedback. The circuit works as a generator generating os the output signal which oscillates and generates an output which oscillates with a fixed amplitude and frequency, it does not require an input signal, it does not require input signal. That means, what it says that we can generate we can generate an output with a particular amplitude, particular amplitude peak to peak voltage and a frequency and a frequency right that is a fixed amplitude, fixed amplitude and fixed frequency, fixed frequency right with the help of an oscillator. All right, so that is a circuit that can generate output signal with fixed amplitude and fixed frequency. Second point it will not require or it does not require any input signal, we will see why, we will see why ok. So, two things you have to understand about the oscillator. In short, an oscillator is an amplifier which uses a positive feedback and without an external input signal generates an output of waveform at a desired frequency. So, if I consider a non-voltage amplifier with voltage gain A, if I consider this 
amplifier will voltage gain A. What we can see? There is a feedback network with feedback factor beta, right? There is a amplifier here with voltage gain A. There is a feedback network here which we call beta, right? The feedback is said to be positive whenever the part of output that is fed into, into the input is in phase with the original input signal applied to the amplifier. What does it mean? All right? See the sentence. What it says that the feedback, the feedback is said to be positive, is said to be positive when the part of the output, this is output, right? When the part of the output is fed back to the input, this is the input, right? In phase, in phase means your input is this, right? Your output can be in phase, or output output can be out of phase, and this part is fed back to the input that should be in phase with the input. It should be in phase. The output, the part of the output that we are feeding back to the uh, oscillator should be in phase. So, you see here the signal, you see this schematic, the schematic is this is your input signal right and this is your feedback signal input voltage or input signal V s feedback signal V f correct. This V i would depend on V s plus V f or V s minus V f. V s plus V f, V s minus V f. Then we have amplifier, we have output voltage. This output voltage is fed back to the feedback network and that goes back to the input signal, right? Easy, very easy, right? Super easy. So, what we have learned? We have learned that when there is a feedback network beta and when we apply a output voltage, a part of output voltage is fed back to the input, it is in phase and that is why it is a positive feedback, it is to said to be positive. Okay. Next, next is assume that a sinusoidal input signal V s is applied to the input and since amplifier is non inverting, the output signal is in phase with input. A part of output signal is fed back into input of the amplifier through the feedback network shown in figure. This is exactly what we are talking about. Here we have considered the amplifier is your non inverting amplifier. Non inverting amplifier means your output, your output would be in phase with the input. In phase that means if it is 0 degree, this is also 0 degree right and if it is an inverting amplifier, then your output would be out of phase, out of phase. 180 degree out of phase. If I see this signal and if I see the input signal, my output is 180 degree out of phase. But here what we have considered? We have considered that the amplifier that we are using is a non inverting amplifier. So, your output would be in phase to the input signal, right? This much is easy. So, let us quickly see once again what this slide shows us. This slide shows us few important points. One is that the oscillator uses positive feedback. Second is that uh, the oscillator is a circuit that generates a fixed, a fixed amplitude and frequency. Fixed amplitude and frequency it generates a signal with a fixed amplitude and frequency, right? Third thing, the feedback, the feedback is said to be positive or when when we can see it is a positive when the part of the output signal that is feedback to the input is is in phase in phase okay so these things we have learned in the introduction to the oscillators now the amplifier gain that is a that is it amplifies the vi by a times to give output voltage vo correct you see this circuit okay this schematic here the here we are just talking about this part so, what we see is what we see is the amplifier, amplifier input is V i, output is V o. So, how we can define A? We can define A as V i by V o, correct? 
A is V i by V o, this is the open loop gain, because if I just consider this square right a rectangle in which my circuit is there, then there is no feedback and that is why it is an open loop gain, it is an open loop gain. So, what we see is that the amplifier gain is A right, that is amplifies the input signal V i by A times to give the output signal V o or we can write A equals to V i by V o, this is the open loop gain of the amplifier, the overall input system is V s and the net output is V o. So, let us go back and now what we are saying is that the overall input to this oscillator right is V s and the output is V o correct overall is V s this is the input signal amplifier, but overall is V s. So, V s and V o. So, in this particular case the overall system is V s output is V o the ratio of V o to V s is considered the effect of feedback is called the closed loop gain of the circuit and is given by A f equals to V o by V s right. So, in this particular case when we consider signal V s and we consider the signal V o then we have to understand that this V s and this V o are, are dependent on the feedback are dependent on the feedback right because depending on the V f your V s that is applied to the amplifier would change right and and my now it is a closed loop amplifier because we have closed the loop and here we can have gain A f equals to V s by V o that is what we have written or V o by V s right V o by V s correct. Okay. This is also ok. Now, we can also write gain equals to V o by V i here ok, V o by V i ok. So, this one is done, this is done. Let us see another one, the feedback is positive and the feedback voltage V t is added to the input signal V s to get the input to the amplifier V i which is correct absolutely correct. Why? because if I see it, my feedback signal is V t, okay. my input signal is V s, then my V i would be nothing but V i equals to V s plus V t, why plus because the signal is in phase, signal is in phase that is what we have written V i equals to feedback signal plus input signal. This V i is the input to the amplifier but V t that is feedback signal depends on the feedback factor beta right, because you see again this signal depends on the feedback factor beta right, that is why what we have to write V t equals to beta times V o right, V o is applied part of V o is applied to the beta and that is why your feedback signal V t would be beta times V o is it very easy right. So, that is why we can write B, V t equals to or feedback signal voltage feedback voltage V t equals to V t equals to beta times V o. So, what we will have this is if I say this is equation 1, this is equation 2 substituting equation 2 in equation 1 right. What I have? I have V i equals to beta times V o or V s equals to, so V i equals to V s plus beta times V o or V s equals to V i minus beta times V o correct, this is easy. So, substituting in the expression of A f, now what is A f? A f is V o by V s, we know what is V s right, we know what is V s, so if I substitute value of V s in A f, what will I have? V a f equals to V o upon V i minus beta e B o this is very easy right. Now, if I divide both the numerator and denominator by V i what will I have A f equals to V o by V i 1 minus beta into V o by V i right or A f equals to A of divide by 1 minus A beta dash because A is nothing but V o by V i right. We have seen A is V o by V i. 
So, what we are writing a f equals to a divided by 1 minus a beta dash. Now, consider value. So, here we have found out here we have found out the feedback gain the gain with feedback is dependent on gain v o by v i divided by 1 minus a into feedback into v o by v i which is gain correct. Now, consider various values of beta and the corresponding values of a f for constant amplifier gain of 20. So, if I say that I a is constant 20 if I change the value of a f and change the value of beta what I see right let us see. So, a is 20 if I change beta equals to 0 0.05 I will get a f equals to 22.22 ok. This is constant you see a is constant I am only changing value of beta I am only changing value of beta. Now, increasing the value of beta increases my gain a f increasing further increases my gain a f increasing little bit further makes my a f infinite makes my a f infinite that means only a part of output signal should be feedback to the input you see very small very small part will cause very large gain will cause very large gain. So, what does that mean? The above table shows that the gain with feedback increases as the amount of positive feedback increases in the limiting case the gain becomes infinite the gain becomes infinite. This indicates that circuit can produce output without external input V s equals to 0 just by feeding the part of the output as its own input. Similarly, output cannot be infinite, but gets driven into oscillations right output cannot be infinite, but what will happen it will be driven into oscillation other words the circuit um, uh, stops amplifying and starts oscillating you got it you got it very easy right. See again if we closely see what we have done we have we have derived the equation of a f the equation of a f. right now here we have kept we have kept a constant of 20 and we are increasing the beta like you see here this is 0 0.05 is less than 0 0.04 0 0.04 is less than 0 0.045 is less than 0 0.5 that means we are increasing beta correct on increasing beta we see increase in af to the point that it is it is uh, reached to infinite. Now, actually it cannot be infinite that means it will start oscillating. So, in other words the circuit will stop amplifying and start oscillating right it will stop amplifying and start oscillating. Yeah. What important things that we have to learn from this slide that only a part of output signal is fed feedback to the input or beta is extremely small beta is extremely small. So, to understand the uh, oscillator we have to understand a very important criteria called Barkhusen criteria. So, what is that Barkhusen criteria and why we have to learn to understand the oscillator to understand the oscillator all right. So, we will see today what exactly is the Barkhusen criteria and why it is important to understand uh, so to uh, get the idea how the oscillations would work all right. So, if you see the screen what we find is that considering a basic inverting amplifier with an open loop gain a the feedback network attenuation beta is less than a unity as a basic amplifier inverting it produces a phase shift of 180 degree between input and output as shown in figure right. One thing we have seen what that if I apply input signal and if I consider my amplifier to be inverting then my output signal would be 180 degree out of phase with respect to input right this is what is written first sentence ok this is easy to understand. Now, let us see now the input V i is applied to the amplifier right V i is applied to this amplifier 
is to be derived from its output voltage using feedback network. So, this feedback network should be there some feedback network should be there right to which this this V O should be fed and this would be fed to your V I. So, that your V S can be determined correct that is what we have seen. So, but the feedback must be positive right that means that if I feed part of this voltage if I feed back to the input of the oscillator this the phase the phase here is 180 degree out of phase, but here I want same phase here I want same phase because this is a positive feedback right we have just seen here it is 180 degree out of phase here I want same phase. So, what is the return here that but the feedback must be positive that is voltage derived from the output using the feedback network must be in phase with input V i correct that we have seen. Thus, the feedback network must introduce a phase shift of 180 degree is it correct. So, you see very very easy to understand ok very easy to understand do not get confused it is very easy to understand what is saying is that if I apply input signal which is like this if I see output signal which is 180 degree out of phase I have to I have to provide a part of the output signal back to the input through my feedback network beta right this I know this we have seen right part of the output is fed back to the input through feedback network beta. So, part of the output how it looks like like this now this is 180 degree out of phase right compared to the input, but we know that the input should be in phase the part of the signal that is provided back to the input should be in phase that means, my my feedback that is provided back to the input should be 0 degree, but here it is 180 degree how can I make it 0 degree. So, this 180 degree if I introduce a phase shift of 180 degree in my beta if I introduce a phase shift of 180 degree in my feedback network then 180 degree plus 180 degree that will be my 360 degree 360 degree is equal to 0 degree correct 0 and 360 degree are same. That means, that my beta that is feedback network should introduce a phase shift of 180 degree if my amplifier is an inverting amplifier which is causing my output to be out of phase with respect to input that is why my output is 180 degree out of phase and then this output part of this output is fed back to the input through beta which is feedback network it has to again have 180 degree phase shift which is provided by my feedback network beta this is what is written thus the feedback network must introduce a phase shift of 180 degree while feeding back the voltage from output to the input this ensures the positive feedback. And this arrangement whatever we are drawing here is already shown in the figure here correct. So, if you see input signal uh, 0 degree 180 degree phase shift because inverting amplifier. So, 180 degree part of output is feedback to the input this is 180 degree phase because this is same voltage which is V O right a part of the voltage. Here you see this is similar to 0 degree right. So, this this phase shift this phase shift is introduced by feedback network beta correct this is what is shown here and uh, uh, this is how the uh, things work. So, first thing we understood that inverting amplifier then we have to use a feedback network which can introduce 180 degree phase shift. Now, considering a fixed voltage V i applied to that uh, applied at the input of the amplifier what we get is V o equals to a times V i the feedback network beta decides the feedback to the to the given to the input. So, V f is nothing but beta times V o on substituting the value what we get. So, we know this V o equals to a V i we have V f equals to beta V o. So, if I substitute the value we have V f equals to beta times a v i right. 
for the oscillator we want that the feedback should drive the amplifier hence V f must act as V i correct this is also easy for the oscillator what we want the feedback should drive the amplifier and hence V f that is feedback voltage must act as a input voltage. Therefore, we can write V f is sufficient to act as V i when we have a beta equals to 1 right you see this is feedback network right feedback voltage feedback voltage is gain into beta into V i. So, the but in reality what we want V f should be equal to V i right feedback voltage should drive the amplifier. So, to do that what is the what is the thing that we require that this a and beta the mode of a beta should be 1. Second thing the phase of V f is same as V i right this is first thing all right let us say a. Second is phase of feedback. So, we say B all right that is feedback network should introduce 1 degree phase shift in addition to 1 degree phase shift introduced by inverting amplifier if we are using inverting amplifier this ensures positive feedback. So, the total phase shift is 360 degree or 0 degree that means, my V f and V i are in phase are in phase correct you got it first thing is that my V f should be equal to V i and to get that to get that my a beta should be equal to 1. So, that is my first condition my second condition is the V f and V i should have same phase right. So, in this condition we have drives a circuit and without external input circuit works as an oscillator. The above two conditions which are conditions condition 1. So, let me remove this. So, it is not confusing anymore let us say this is condition 1 this is condition 2 right. The above conditions required to work the circuit as an oscillator are called the bar cosine criteria for oscillation ok. So, whenever somebody asks what, what are the bar cosine criteria for oscillations we can say that there are two criteria. first is that a into beta mode of a into beta should be 1 second condition is that V f should be in phase with V i or the feedback signal should be in phase with the input signal right. So, if we are using an inverting amplifier feedback should introduce 1 into degree phase shift if we are using a non inverting amplifier feedback should not introduce any phase shift right. So, the bar cushion criteria states that 1 the total phase shift around a loop as the signal pro proceeds from input through the amplifier feedback network back to uh, the input again completing a loop should be 0 degree or 360 degree right total phase shift should be 0 degree or 360 degree that is the first criteria that means if I apply a input signal my output signal is feedback through the feedback network to the input of the oscillator then my output which is feedback through the feedback network should be in phase with the input signal that is my first condition right. So, if it is my output voltage is out of phase then my feedback network should provide a 180 degree phase shift. If my output is in phase with the input my feedback network does not require to provide any phase shift. So, two things you have to remember right. Second thing is first thing is this second thing is the magnitude of the product of open loop gain of the amplifier and feedback network what is the open loop gain of the amplifier A and what is feedback network beta right. So, magnitude of the product of open loop gain of the amplifier and the feedback network should always be equal to 1 why because we have seen that V f that is a feedback voltage is equal to A into beta into V i and a V f should be enough to drive the input signal to meet this condition V f should be equal to V i to meet that condition A into beta equals to 1. So, two conditions when you remember then you understand what exactly is a or what exactly uh, is a bar question criteria and what does it states ok. So, if you come back on the screen what you see is that if you can satisfy this both the conditions 
if you satisfy first two condition then the circuit works as an oscillator producing a sustained oscillations of cost constant frequency and amplitude. If you satisfy these conditions the circuit works as an oscillator producing sustained oscillation of constant frequency and amplitude. In reality no input signal is needed to start the oscillation. In practice A beta is made slightly greater than 1 to start the oscillation and then it adjusted itself to equal to 1 finally resulting in a sustained oscillation or self sustained oscillation right. So, uh, ideally there is no input required, uh, but practically or in practice what we will do we will have A into beta should be slightly greater than 1 and then it it comes back to a into beta becomes equal to 1. Once oscillation start the a into beta becomes uh, uh, gets equal to 1 ok. Now, we will see the effect of a beta on the nature of oscillations. So, now once you know right how the things works let us see how what is the effect of product of a into beta on the oscillations ok. So, let us see that if I have a into beta product of my gain into feedback greater than 1 what will happen I will see when my a beta equal to 1 what will happen I will see when a beta is less than 1 what will happen right. So, if you see the screen what we see is when I have a mode of a into beta greater than 1 then when the total phase shift around the loop is 0 degree and a beta phase shift is 0 degree and a beta is greater than 1 then the output oscillates but the oscillations are growing type the amplitude of oscillation goes on increasing as shown in figure right. That means if I keep a beta equal is greater than 1 my output oscillations will st will start growing it is growing it keeps on growing ok it keeps on growing all right. Let us see if I have a mode of a into beta equal to 1 in this state what will happen when total phase shift around the loop is 0 degree or 360 degree ensuring a positive feedback and a into beta equals to 1 then the oscillations are stay oscillations are with constant frequency and amplitude and are called sustained oscillations what are they called sustained oscillations when when you have a into beta mode of a into beta equal to 1 and you can see here the sustained sustained oscillations oscillations are constant frequency constant voltage peak to peak voltage constant and that is why they are sustained oscillations ok. Now, if I have a into beta mode of a into beta less than 1 what will happen when the total phase shift is 0 degree or 360 degree, but a beta is less than 1. Then the oscillations are of decaying type such oscillation amplitude decreases exponentially and the oscillation finally, sees down you see the oscillations are decreasing and they it looks like they are decaying and finally, they will cease down they will die right. So, the circuit works as an amplifier without oscillations and decaying oscillations are shown here in the figure. So, the start the oscillation without input a beta is kept little bit higher than unity and then the circuit adjust equal to 1 to result in the sustained oscillation alright guys you know now know why we require a beta equals to 1. The obvious case one here is the obvious question here is that if no input is required if no input is required how will oscillation start how we can have oscillations alright. And when does from where does the starting voltage come from there are two questions right how we are not applying any input how oscillations can start and if, if there is a starting voltage from where it is coming from where the starting voltage is coming. So, these two signals we have to understand how the how the oscillation starts and from where the signal is from the where the voltage is coming. So, the starting voltage 
the starting voltage of the oscillator. So, every resistance you see the resistance in the uh, oscillator circuit every resistance has some free electrons under the influence of normal room temperature this free electrons moves randomly in a various direction right. Such a movement of free electrons generates a voltage called noise voltage all right so, what is said that every resistance has some free electrons. Now, in room temperature the, so, so now you have to understand the, the semiconductor devices and physics of semiconductor devices to understand that how the free electrons are there, how the free holes are there in the, in the room temperature how the moment occurs. But let us assume that we know uh, how does these things happen and thus we are assuming that there are free electrons and this free electrons will start moving randomly. All right, that how they will move randomly in the because of the effect of room temperature. Right. There are few electrons that will start moving randomly. This free movement of this electron will cause a noise. This will cause a noise across the resistance. Such noise voltage present across the resistance are amplified. Right, resistance has free electrons. Free electrons move uh, at the room temperature. That causes a noise voltage. This noise voltage presence across the resistance are amplified because we have a oscillator circuit. If you come back to, to the screen what we see is that when this voltage is present across the resistance are amplified hence to amplify such small noise voltages we have to keep a beta greater than 1 slightly greater than 1 right to start to start what to start the amplification amplification of what amplification of small noise voltage small noise voltage generates from where some small noise voltage generates from the free electrons right uh, that are present in the resistance and that are moving randomly in various direction in normal room temperature easy now once we start the amplification such amplifier voltage appears at the output terminals the part of output is sufficient to drive the input of the amplifier circuit then the circuit adjusts itself to equal to 1 and phase shift is 360 degree or 0 degree. So, we can get a sustained oscillations all right. So, this is how the starting voltage is there in the starting voltage is there when we have to use an oscillator circuit when we have to use an oscillator circuit. So, let us see example let us see an example ok interesting. So, the problem is the problem is let us read the statement in a certain oscillator circuit the gain is given and the feedback is given verify bar cushion criteria for sustained oscillation also find the frequency at which the circuit will oscillate. So, what is our criteria a into beta should be equal to 1 second is phase shift phase should be 0 degree phase of the input provided through the feedback right third would be we require to find frequency at which the oscillations will start. This we are asked what we are given we are given uh, gain is given and then beta is given correct. So, A is given beta is given to verify by ocean criteria which means we have to verify A beta equal to 1 at a frequency for which phase if 0 degree. So, let us express a beta in a rectangular form when we have to express it in rectangular form I will write a into beta is this value. So, if I further work on this equation what will I get I will get this value. Now, if I rationalize the denominator if I rationalize the denominator. So, again guys you see you have to understand mathematics ok this are this is very basic mathematics very basic mathematics. So, I am, I am presuming that you it is presumed that you have you know these things all right. Uh, so, a into beta is this we have this equation I have to rationalize the denominator and so we have this particular equation is it. On solving this equation what will I have a beta equals to this particular equation right. Now, a beta equals to 0 degree right that is a criteria. So, imaginary part of a beta must be 0. So, which is the imaginary part? which is the imaginary part in this particular equation we have to see and make it 0. This is possible this is possible when we have 
omega i into this value equals to 0. You see here where is the imaginary part? Imaginary part is here right this part right this part you see imaginary part. So, we have written the imaginary part equals to 0 omega equals to 0 or 4 into 106 for 10 to the power 6 this is power 6 minus omega square equals to 0 or omega square equals to 4 into 10 to power 6 or omega equals to 2 into 10 to the power 3 radian per second radian per second right at this frequency a beta can be obtained as a into beta we will may multiply at this value which is 10 to the power 3 10 to the power 3 right then we will have a beta equal to 1 when we solve this equation what we will find a beta equals to 1 right that is what we want that is what we want at omega equal to 2 into power 10 to the power 3 we have a beta equals to 0 degree as imaginary part is 0 while a beta equals to 1 thus the bar Cruzan criteria is satisfied correct because a beta is 0 degree and the uh, a into beta is 1. So, phase is 0 and the mode of a into beta is 1 that is how we have solved the problem. So, now we know that yes this satisfies the bar Cruzan criteria, but we are asked to also find the frequency at which the oscillations will start is not it. So, let us find the frequency all right. So, if you see the screen what we see that the frequency at which the circuit will oscillate is a value of omega for which a beta equals to 1 and phase shift is 0 at the same time. Since omega equals to 2 pi f or f equals to omega by 2 pi we know the value of omega we know the value of omega omega is 10 to the power 10 to the power 3 by 2 pi or 318.309 hertz 318.309 309 hertz right you, uh, this is my mistake. So, just consider this 10 to the power 3 ok 10 to the power 3. So, it is very easy right omega we already know omega is 2 pi f or f equals to omega by 2 pi we already know what is omega omega is 2 to the power 10 to 3 2 into 10 to the power 3 into 10 radian per second. So, we substitute the value and we get value of f equals to 318.309 hertz which is the starting frequency for the oscillators. So, we have find found out that this satisfies bar Cruzan criteria and we have found out the value of frequency two things we have found out right. So, <coughs> what we have seen guys in this particular module we have seen how the oscillator works right what what exactly is a oscillator uh, what are the minimum requirements for a circuit to become an oscillator that is our bar Cruzan criteria. And then we have seen that if we have a into beta greater than 1 what will happen right if it is equal to 1 what will happen if it is less than 1 what will happen and uh, we have also solved a problem to understand or verify whether the problem the given set of values in the problem satisfies the bar Cruzan criteria or not right. Now what we will see in the next module we will see that what how we can classify the oscillators right classify the oscillators until now what we have seen is what are the oscillators and what are the criteria for the oscillator. Next module we will see the classifications of the oscillator and we will go on from that particular point. Till then you again see whatever is taught in this particular module right and I uh, will catch you in the next module till then you take care.